It's time to play 30 Seconds of Fame. Three sports bloggers compete at their chance to rant about anything they want for 30 seconds on national television. Let's meet today's bloggers. First up is Chris Dart. He's a staff writer for Torontoist, writes about everything from hip hop to mixed martial arts. Next is Megan Ann Wilson, who writes for ESPN affiliated The Shadow League about athletic fashion, menswear, sports style, and sneakers. And finally, Trevor Smith. He just launched his own sports site, Low Culture High Concept, and contributes to a basketball column for Hoops at it. All right, competitors, are you ready to compete for your 30 seconds of fame? Yep. Yes? All right. So question number one. Someone in the crowd at a snooker match recently farted and everybody started laughing. Now, it made us wonder, should fans not be able to be as loud as they want at quiet sports like tennis and golf? Chris? Golf, I get. The crowds are close, talking to the backswing. Tennis players are the loudest athletes in the world. I don't understand why the crowd can't make more noise. Like, are you going to interrupt the grunting and screaming? This is like, I, I, it's totally beyond me. They paid the money. Everybody's yelling anybody. Time to There you go. Megan? I think they should keep the respect of quiet because when someone does scream or yell, or you get crazy fans that are streaking or that are yelling at Tiger when he's when he uh, slices something, it's way funnier. So when you have those quick little moments, you would appreciate it so much more. And you, it's up. something special. Trevor? The support of it, anything that gets either sport away from the country club, kind of elitist atmosphere, makes it more accessible. The two best moments in golf last year for me were the Ryder Cup, where people were way too drunk and way too loud and just having a good time. And then also the guy that yelled, like the candle at Tiger at, the, at a public course at the Players' Championship. All right, question number two. A Leafs fan held up a sign in Game 3 that read Toronto Stronger, playing on the Boston Strong Rally for the city of Boston after the bombings. Now, is this guy's sign a fun play by a fan, or is it in poor taste? What do you think, Chris? I hate Boston sports fans like poison, mm -hmm. and even I thought this was over the line. I thought it was like, you know, as terrible as Boston sports fans are, you give them a break after a massive tragedy. I think more than anything, he made Toronto sports fans look like a bunch of crass, ignorant pinheads. Which sometimes is not hard to do. Megan? Well, on that note, um, I think Toronto sports fans already have a terrible reputation, so they're just adding to it. And when you hold up a sign like that, all it's going to do is motivate Bruins fans. They're gonna, now they're going to be Boston strongest. So I think all you're doing is motivating the fans and the players to say, you know what, Toronto? We got this. So the two Ottawa people taking shots at Toronto, I like it. Um, <laughs> what I would say is that it was too soon. Uh, if he wants to look like a clown uh, in two or three weeks, people are probably going to forgive it. But it does reflect poorly on the city because of how recent it is and that tragedy being so uh, fresh in our minds. All right, let's move on to question number three. LeBron James received 120 out of 121 first place votes for the MVP award. A Boston writer who voted for Carmelo Anthony instead tried to defend why he denied LeBron the chance at being the only unanimous MVP choice in NBA history. Do you think that this writer is just trying to get attention or did he do the right thing and defend it publicly? Chris. I think that's a false binary. I think do, getting, getting attention is doing the right thing. You're a columnist. Your job is absolutely to drive website hits and sell newspapers. He managed to do that way more than he would have otherwise. And he managed to do it without being an inflammatory jackass. So, like, so much the better. Thumbs up. Right thing. I think he did the right thing, too. Um, Gary Washburn is a great writer, and he came through and really defended his point and brought up a good point about that this is the MVP of this season for the team. It's not the best player in the universe. And it is LeBron, because he's a superhero. He has every cheat code. He's amazing. But the Knicks wouldn't be anywhere without Melo this season. Trevor? I think that he is trolling a little bit, but I think it's okay because he stepped up and defended his position. Now, it's the wrong opinion, but it's his opinion to have, and it's his right to have that. It kind of reminds me of when Chuck Swarovski voted for Bargnani over Brandon Roy and denied him a unanimous Rookie of the Year vote. And the end, it didn't really matter. All right, bloggers, thank you for all of your opinions. I am going to say, Chris, I think you are the weakest link. You're being sent to the shame zone. All right, let's move on to round two. NFL player Mario Williams, who plays defensive end for the Buffalo Bills, is suing his ex fiance to get the $750,000 ring back. Should she give it back? Megan? <laughs> I don't think in this situation that she should give it back. It's a situation where when I first heard about it, it's, it goes back to it's cheaper to keep her. He should just 
cut his losses and go. And if his money is so important, he should not be buying Bill Kelly's house in Buffalo that has 13 rooms. Come on. Because she broke up with him, all I'm hearing in my head is Kanye saying, I'm not saying she's a gold digger, but <laughs> um, basically my concern about this is he paid 3% or something of his guaranteed money from Buffalo to get this ring, which is a sizable chunk of change. So if she doesn't want to stick with him, I think he's allowed to ask for it back. Out of those two opinions, I am going to say I was the most entertained by Megan. So unfortunately, yes. Trevor, you are getting sent to the shame zone. <laughs> Megan, you now have the 30 seconds of fame. The floor is yours. All right, I work primarily as an athlete stylist, and this might shock some people, but we need to get rid of the NBA dress code. It doesn't make sense anymore. Not everyone wants to be Allen Iverson. Now everyone wants to compete with Westbrook, and when you don't give them that chance to wear something different, to get out of the mold, you have to let it out there. And I think the best time to do it will be when David Silver comes out as his new commissioner in January. He can be the guy for the players. He can show them that he's on their side. You can wear whatever the hell you want going to the league. So I think goodbye NBA dress code. Good riddance. Well said. Yes. <laughs> Definitely check out Megan's site. And while you're on the internet, you have to check out this hilarious video. Even if you love Amari, you gotta love this.